Yo, it's your boy Manage Music from RDB and you are watching DXB Today. Hello everyone and welcome to another fabulous episode of DXB Today. Now, if you're not hungry, you're about to be because we've got a beautiful culinary episode lined up for you. And on that note, let's find out what's coming up on today's show. All right, Dubai's calendar is packed with events. We're gonna tell you about the biggest events coming to the city. We're learning all about Nicaraguan cuisine with a supper club founder. Plus, we've got an exclusive interview with British Indian Trio RDB. All right, guys, this episode's definitely gonna gear us up for the weekend. I wanna know any good plans, anything that we can learn from. I'll tell you what I'm up to. On Saturday, I'm going to AquaVenture after dark. So what I've been to mean? AquaVenture at the Atlantis in the daytime, but this starts at 8 p.m. and it goes on until midnight. So I'm not really sure what to expect, but I know that we're supposed to wear our swimwear. All the rides will be open as far as I know, but there's gonna be DJ parties and activations as oh, well. Oh, come so on, that is awesome. I'm very Never excited. Never heard of that. that. Now, for my individual calendar, I'm planning on taking a boat, going to the middle of the ocean, fishing, whatever I catch, barbecue it, and enjoy some leisure in the open water. Well, it sounds like I have to stay on the beach. So I am planning on kicking off my weekend on the beach, Kite Beach, every Saturday, 8 a.m. We do Pirate Surf, which is essentially Baywatch camp for kids. And oh, the weather is amazing up until like maybe 10.30, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Yes, it's getting better. Now that's from our individual calendars, but let's get to this. Our guest co-host today started a website years ago, posting impartial food reviews of restaurants across the UAE. Today, she's an authority on all things dining. I'm Samantha Wood, the founder of impartial restaurant review website, Fudiba.net. I'm excited to be your co-host today. See you in a few minutes. Thank you, Samantha. She is gonna be telling us where to eat and what to order from the menu. But before all of that, let's head to the old part of town with the frying pan adventures. Arva Ahmed to check out a very special sandwich. <laughs> Sandwiches are one of the most universal templates for culinary expression. You can go as basic as you want, or you can get super complicated. And I love to see what different cultures around the world do with their sandwiches. Dubai is one of the best places to do that kind of sandwich exploration, which is exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look at three different cultures that are cooking up a storm, and we're gonna see what kind of drama they bring to their sandwiches. So what they do is they're actually smoking the eggs. In Arabic, it's just called Beid Meshwi. But what happens is they put these eggs under wood chips and they smoke them overnight. And by the next morning, these eggs become really smooth and creamy. And then they take a Ka'at Magdisi, which is basically a Palestinian style sesame seed bread. It's famous in Jerusalem. And you open that up, you smear in some cream cheese and the spicy shoppa, put in the eggs, za'atar, salt, pepper, and then some olive oil to just seal in all of the flavors. Close it, smash it down, and then you know what to do next. There we go. Oh my God. That egg and the za'atar and the olive oil and the shatta, that combination with that smooth creamy cheese, this is gonna take you straight back to that little shop in Amman in Jordan where I first had the sandwich. It's phenomenal. Once I polish off the sandwich, we're gonna go to a different part of Dubai to have a sandwich that's made by the Vietnamese. I'm at Saigon Station right here in downtown. They actually have two branches. One has been around in Silicon Oasis for the past four years and it has a real fan following. So join me, we're gonna try one of the most vibrant sandwiches that you can find on this planet, and that's the Vietnamese banh mi. My banh mi has just emerged out of the oven, and it is one monster of a sandwich. But the way you know whether it's good or not, like the first test is just checking that bread because it should there should be a knock on that baguette and then you know it was done perfectly. All right, I am so excited. God help me, I don't know how I'm gonna fit the whole thing in my mouth, but here goes. That bread is so on point. Mm. And the thing with the banh mi is that there are so many layers 
to this sandwich. So you can see you've got the meat up on the top, there's beef, there's strips of chicken, and then down here you have all the veg, and it's the veg that actually give it that vibrant little bit of a, a punch. Pull up a seat at this gorgeous restaurant. It's really got the vibe of Vietnam happening right here. The service is amazing. They're super funny. Uh, and just sit here and enjoy your sandwich. We are here in Barsha for our final sandwich tasting at a restaurant that's called Taksim Cafe. They specialize in Turkish street food. And we're here for a very special street sandwich, which is made with roasted lamb intestines. Here we have it. This is Coco Reg. It's one of the very popular street foods of Turkey and it's made with roasted lamb intestines that are wrapped around different kinds of organ meat. So it's a little bit adventurous, but if you have that kind of appetite, it's well worth a try. And what's great is that the minute the sandwich hits the table, the aroma gets you right away. You can get the smell of the oregano and the chili peppers all of that, the cumin, all of it just hits the air instantly. So I'm gonna just mash it all down and get in there for a bite. There you have it. Three completely different sandwiches, different countries, Palestine, Turkey, and Vietnam. Dubai is one of those cities where you can truly travel the world. Thank you to Arva for that. Three sandwiches in three places sounds like my kind of gig. Now, from one food expert to another, Samantha, we're so excited to have you on the show. Thanks so much for coming here. I'm so excited as well. Yeah, I've been following you for years now. Likewise. We, well, thank you. Um, we want to start off talking about the homegrown local restauranteurs. They're, you know, the, the business is flourishing. The scene is taken off. We're going global. What are your thoughts? I'm so excited you've actually brought that up because our homegrown dining scene, and by that I mean Dubai-born concepts, is growing so much to the point that actually we, I feel we actually have stronger locally developed concepts than all these imported ones, which is amazing and it's a sign of a maturing dining scene. Can you name some of your favourite local homegrown uh, restaurants? Oh, I have so many favourites <laughs> that I have to put them together in an annual guide because it would be, if I had children, it would be like choosing my favourite children. Uh, well, everyone so... has a favourite child though. Okay. Dina? Um, <laughs> it depends on the day, but yes, sometimes. You just don't admit it, yeah. <laughs> So tell us a little about what you do, because you are in charge of Food Diva. Tell us about that. I'm essentially a food writer and a restaurant reviewer. So um, my USP, I feel, is that I actually go in and review restaurants anonymously. I don't accept invitations um, and no freebies policy. And that way I can be impartial, I can write honestly and constructively about the dining experience. Are you allowed to do scathing reviews here? I, I never know what the rules are. Do you know, I th yes, you are actually, um, but you just have to be constructive. So if I don't like something yeah. or if a dish doesn't work, I will explain why. What about customer service? Um, oh, it covers service. Um, for me, the dining experience is not just about the food, the service, the atmosphere, the location, the restaurant, um, the price point, they all play a role. And when I go in, I'm rating across all those parameters um, and, the, and restaurants will get a score out of five on that basis. Okay. So uh, what would make you tick a restaurant to give it a green right tick or an X, let's say? Well, it has to tick all the boxes that I just mentioned um, for it to score highly. Uh, I've had restaurants that have scored four and 4.5 out of five. I've, I've not yet come across a five. Um, I'm probably a perfectionist, but I also think there's always room for well, improvement. There's still definitely a chance. I know there's a lot of cool concepts which are coming to the region very, very soon. Can you tell us about some of your favorites that you've tried or that you're excited to try? I think we have three at the moment that are very strong, ticking the homegrown box. Restaurateur Tom Arnold, um, known for Tom and Serge, he's opened Hawker Boy, a Southeast Asian restaurant, and also The Guild, which is actually three restaurants in one in DIFC. What does that mean? 
Um, that essentially means he has three concepts in one area. So he has the nurseries, which is where you can have breakfast or a casual lunch. He has rock pool with a seafood bar. And then he has the salon, which is like a grand sort of brasserie style restaurant. And it's all the same sort of seating, kind of like a food court. No. <laughs> I don't think he'll like don't it if you food call, court. Like I can't if take you, you call him a food us. court. Yeah. No, not at all. It's not even a food hall. It's, it's, it's very grandiose, actually. It's very glam, Dubai style. Uh, so you'd actually be impressed by how upscale it is when, when you walk in. So but, definitely dress up for it. Yeah. But it's nice to have a multi-focus approach. But when we talk about cuisine dominance here, I mean, one would agree that the Asian cuisine really dominates. But based on your reviews, what do you think is the dominating continent in the cuisine venture? Um, it is at the moment when you have so much Asian. Um, I mean, the other concepts that have recently opened, you have uh, Reef Japanese Kushiaki mm -hmm. and Holy Cow by Reef Otman. One is Japanese, as the name suggests. The other one is Korean. You have Oku. Do you remember Oku? I do Oku. remember Oku. Oku. It's yes. back. Yeah. Japanese. It's back. It closed for five years and it's back in a new location at Marriott. Um, so they all tick the Asian box. And I think it's very saturated at the moment. So I would urge restaurateurs to think of other cuisines at the moment. We still don't have enough in the modern Middle Eastern field, um, I feel. You have Orfali B Bistro by the Orfali brothers. Oh, he did um, just bring that up and I was oh, like, I have no idea what you're yeah, talking about. It's a surprise. I they don't know about it. I know. I can't believe he's won so many awards as well. And I think what him and what uh, Mohammed Orfali and his brothers are doing is exceptional and it's representative of this region. Mm. But a little bit like when you go to Italy, you'll go and eat pizza and pasta, won't you? When you go to Japan, you'll eat sushi. When people come here, we want them to eat food from this region, not just Asian, Greek, which is where I'm from. Um, so we need to see more of those concepts here, definitely. All right, we'll stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. After the break, we're learning all about Nicaraguan food in Dubai. We're also checking out a piece of paradise in the city. To add to your staycation bucket list, that's all coming up next.